Okay, hopefully this is more on a uh, full screen than last time. Um, yeah, basically underneath in the gearbox now. Um, as we can see, uh, I've got this pan just sitting here. Um, there is a magnet that goes here. Sorry, finger trailing. Um, so basically, at the front of the gearbox, we've got the selector cable. Uh, we've got this plug that goes into the range sensor, which sits just here. So you've got the two bolts and the range sensor goes there where the shaft goes through. So I'm going to have to sort of thread it through the front and then go forwards. And then the uh, selector rod sort of hooks onto the uh, uh, the range sensor, the shaft going through the range sensor, I should say. Um, we've got the uh, gearbox wiring, which is quite self-explanatory according to the... Um, the manual you can see where they actually go because they're kind of bent into shape connecting to the various solenoids Let's just get underneath here okay right so you've got the wiring that goes through here um here the two accumulators that i was talking about they sit in here so you've got your first and second accumulator and your um, neutral drive accumulator they sit in here um they're held in by the valve block which sits on these two pegs so it sits on um, and the manual valve which I showed you that goes in and out of the valve block it connects to this rod here this is the manual control so you you've got your dipstick here so it's sticking out um, you've got your parking port that goes through to the parking pool it's only engaged when the um, selector lever is in the top quadrant uh, so you've got park neutral driver verse one two um, in those quadrants um, and obviously your selector shaft goes on here and you put the little pin that holds the shaft through. So remember, it only goes one way, so you can't get it wrong if, um, and you don't need any alignment tool with uh, your range sensor is stuck to the shaft, which mine is. Um, the second bit is this bit. This is where the servo goes, the piston servo that I was talking about. Um, there is a seal here that just dropped off. Uh, it's in the bowl right now. Um, but basically that is the shaft that the piston can i just show you focus can, can you see a little bit uh, a little bush in there that little bush that is what the um that is what potentially could wear out um if the piston becomes loose the rod becomes loose on the piston sorry and starts shaking side to side um it will cause wear here um that would obviously need to be dreamed drilled out reamed and then an oversized bush fitted to counteract the wear. Um, there are kits for that, but it's a bit of a pain of a job. Um, I don't know how much it costs, but it probably wouldn't be cheap uh, to do that, but my piston's in good shape, and there doesn't appear to be any particular uh, problem with that. Um, but basically, you, you're held down by three bolts, and you've got the spring in there as well. And that goes up and actuates... Sorry, lost the camera this so this is the reverse drum we can see through it and this is the brake band oh still fluid coming out lovely i've been catching quite a bit of fluid um from this gearbox still surprisingly i've put an airline through um some of these where they see this one here yeah that is a, a line that's a line that goes through um there's one up here that's still red that did you see this here this is the piston i think no that's not a piston release that's something else um oh is it it could be actually i didn't realize it was um yeah it's a pretty self-explanatory i've put an airline through there and a lot of fluid came out I'm just trying to extract as much fluid as i can uh from this gearbox before i um put it all back together get as much of the old fluid out as possible um there will be a couple of liters stored in the torque converter um as normal but i've i've managed to extract about four and a half liters which is pretty good going considering the capacity is like 6.8 i did have to take the um i'll just show you the gearbox cooler off uh the car just to get some uh, just to blow that out with an airline i did have to sort of correct some of the fins uh broken fins that sort of thing um, unfortunately you can only get those coolers from America uh, they're about £100 with tax and uh, shipping ch charges and all that um, you can't get them over here unless you get it from Ford um, I think that Ford will be slightly cheaper in that respect 
um, like a lot of things with these gearboxes, it's all based in America. Or if you want a rebuild kit, Australia apparently, I don't know why that is. Um, but I don't need a rebuild kit because there's actually so much that's actually really good. All the seals look good, there's nothing that makes me think, oh, I need a new seal. Um, yeah, this is yeah, this is your, your brake band which this piston either engages or disengages for second, third and fourth. Um, again, if you've got problems with the piston or, well, if the piston's not engaging, that's not going to engage and you're going to lose second or fourth, I believe. But this actually looks quite good I've, I've looked at i've looked at it a bit more closely and there's not as much wear as i thought um in fact that brake band looks as if it's got a lot of life left in it um but the gears look quite okay um there is another thing about this gear but so just move this up um this is the side plate okay you've got the um return line here that you might have to take off if you wanted to get it off um, you have to drop the gearbox um, a little bit by taking the top mount off, um, drop it down and then you can get all these bolts. Um, and this um, is actually a weakness on the Mazda gearboxes, apparently there's a bush that goes through into this reverse drum bearing and it can wear uh, on the Mazda models, but the Ford models don't seem to have that problem. I did have a look for a price of one of these, this, this side plate will come with the, the, bear, the, the bush bearing. Um, and it was about 150 something like that really expensive but these rarely go wrong but theoretically in these gearboxes they've made it really easy to service because this brake band can actually be changed if you need to if you need to change it um, by taking this side cover off and um, basically you've got access to the bolt you, you, you'll have access to the band so you can slip the band off and the anchor bolt which is just where my finger is there take that bolt out and that's what anchors the brake band somehow you do need to get a new size bolt for a new brake band but i think you could probably get away with not doing that so yeah um that is it guys um i just wanted to show you that just to give you some perspective on where it all goes back and maybe i could do another video of it going back in we'll see